Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Critiques. Uh, I did, uh, what is it? I read that. I think I read that. Where are we at here? At two. Use some of the donation money on the assets you talked about and use the 12 hour stream to make something really cool. That is a really good idea. That is a really good idea. Maybe we should all shop together and look for a set. Uh, we will do that if I run out of critiques for today. If not, um, maybe we can discuss it on the Discord. Eric, you like the cold? You madman. You're mad. Okay, let's do this. Wait, why'd the music stop? Oh no. Oh yeah, Seismics. So this guy, uh, this song you're hearing right now is actually from someone who comes to the, uh, the stream sometimes. This guy's awesome. Okay. So looking at all of this stuff, looks super cool. We're gonna use, we're gonna use this pink for happiness. So the detail stuff you got going on here is super nice. Really like that. There's a value difference in it as well, it looks like. Maybe it's a little bit lighter. This metal material is really nice back here. Um, there is a good material video on YouTube about making metal look better in Moto. Let's see if I can find it really, really quickly. Whoa, chat just got all Swedish on me. Where are you at, Moto? I think it was Moto Geeks that did it. Bork Bork. Uh Taxamika. Yeah. Like that. Yata bra. Uh let's see here. I'm trying to find Nordic takeover. So aggressive. So passive aggressive. No, I don't know where it's at. I'm gonna find it for you later, Matt. It's it's good. It's basically a tutorial on uh, rendering metals better. But I really like the roughness breakup that's going on in here. <laughs> Passive aggressive is the name of the game in the north. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. Or arguments about. Uh, <laughs> No Meat Monday. Are you a lead yet? Pinion. Are you a mod yet? Oh wait, yes you are, sorry. I apologize, don't ban me. <laughs> this material is really cool. This uh, this breakup is, is nice that you're doing here. I'm trying to visualize the pattern here. So you got a semi-wide one, same as this one. And then, oh that is so interesting. I'm curious if this distance here is the same as this distance here. Or if you just irregularly add these these shapes so they're not like centered. It's like you're doing uh, intentional offsetting so nothing is centered. <laughs> it's 
It's pretty cool. This is a nice red. I like this red. So the the lip here, uh, it feels strange to me how narrow or thin it is. They judge silently. Judging silently. So this edge is really uh, narrow. It might be too narrow. I don't know. Maybe something to look at. Maybe not. Okay, let's look at the other picture of it. The tires are just crazy, man. Airless tires. Yeah, in the bigger scheme of things, I think that edge might not even matter. Just because you're not really focusing on that so much. I mean, it is a focal point. And you guys should all really pay attention to where uh, there's detail and rest, right? Um, there's a ratio that Matt and I will talk about occasionally. It's like the 30-70 ratio. And so you want 30% of your asset to have like high frequency detail. And uh, the rest, the 70%, you want to be areas for your eyes to rest. So if you look, let's just do this. Uh, bigger. And music. Where are you? So. Matt's super good at keeping this ratio. I guess you could count the tires as, yeah, I can draw. <laughs> so good, oh yeah, so good. <laughs> oh geez. Um, there you go. I bet that is very close to 30%, because Matt's crazy. Uh, that ratio is kind of used by a lot of uh, concept artists, and um, it's just something, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know where I heard it from. It's just something that just gets passed around the industry, and everyone's just like, yeah, 30-70, man. 30-70. And it's like, when you think when you think about that 30-70 thing, that ratio, look at people's work, and uh, you will see the ones that are just that, when it's 50-50, man... It's just so busy. It's hard to look at for long periods of time, and it's hard to lead the eye places. Yeah, it's a really good ratio to follow. Okay, so let's let's see if we can find something that's... I really like this edition. That's, that's the greatness. That's what it's all about. We need to get some shirts. Detail here is really cool. Um, just looking around. I, man, I don't know. It's, it's looking cool. I kind of just want to wait until, until uh, you're approaching like a finish finish point. Uh, this feels really flat right now. Maybe having it lip up. I don't know if. I don't know if you want to have that curve up and then go back go back down. This looks super sick. It's it's so hard to critique Matt's stuff because uh, wherever it feels like the edge might start to get a little too sharp, like right here, it's consistent enough around in other areas that you know that that edge is intentional because it's tight here as well. So wherever he's making a hard break point, he's keeping it rather tight, but then on these edges, he's rounding those out pretty, pretty nicely. Uh, 
I want to see a really nice car material shader, man. If you're gonna if you're gonna bring this over the top, I want to see really nice car car paint. It can still be white like this, but I want to feel like there's those layers, you know. Yeah, sci-fi helmets are a perfect example of uh, uh, when it when it can go too far and often goes too far. Um, where are we at here? Okay, next, Nesta, Nesta. Okay, so Corey, we got Corey looking at Substance Painter now. Uh, he is saying, "Does this look right?" Am I forgetting or not seeing something? So, okay. I don't know if Corey is in here. He is not in here. Okay, so I think you may be getting the gradients. Man, I need to see your file, but... Uh, if you haven't baked any normal maps, I think what's happening is when you export, If there's no normal maps on that, when you're exporting your mesh, oh, it looks like you got it. Export as an OBJ. So when you export it as an FBX, in your FBX settings, you need to make sure that you're, um, you need to make sure that you're exporting out your your smoothing groups or your normal normal groups. Yeah, smoothing groups. It looks like is what it is. Game exporter for Maya smoothing groups. He figured it out. I'm seeing this as I'm going down this list. This is probably why we need to make sure that uh, that troubleshooting happens in the in the uh, technical thread. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> okay. What do we got here, dude? This sky looks really cool. What is this? This is. Uh, What's the plugin you're you're using for the sky, Barbarian? <laughs> it's like I'm not mad. I'm just disappoint. <laughs> True Sky. This is pretty nice. Uh, the one I'm using in Unreal right now is called Ultra Dynamic Sky. Looks like I need to update it too. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. Um, I don't think it looks as nice as this. This looks pretty good. The uh, the night looks really nice as well. The resolution of the sky might feel a little low res. I don't know if that's like maybe it's your Maybe the DOF is blurring it out a bit. But yeah, these feel super nice. Yeah, it is kind of like a painting, isn't it? Let's see if... Uh, where are we at here? Dun, 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 dun. So we'll get that Ultra Dynamics guy updated, and then I'll just drag it into a scene. It's volumetric, which is a really cool. That is really cool. Freaking, how badass! So I'll open this up. We don't have as much. Uh, whoa, hello. We don't have as much work in progress stuff this time around. It looks like. Oh no, you guys are adding stuff. Awesome. We got time to get to it. We got the time. Hmm. <clears throat> we'll look at this and then I'll move on to the next one, which looks like it's Andrew working on some more cool hard surface parts. We also, we got about 40 minutes left on the stream. Let's just do a new level and we'll do default. So true sky, where you or true sky, where you at? 
uh, other sky. <laughs> Ultra dynamic sky. Ultra. So we got a link to the uh, directional light, exponential flaw, uh, fog, flog. No skylight. So. Oops. Oh, we don't need an empty actor. We need, we need shapes. We need things. Oh, what was that? What was that? Oh, I'm too slow. Oh, I'm too slow. Hostile. Thanks for following, dude. What's going on? What is this, my project editor? <laughs> you get out of here with those words. <laughs> okay, so let's go here and see time of day. Oh, I don't have it attached to the, uh, what? Is it this guy? Yeah, it is this guy. There we go, okay. That's not, I mean, that's not bad. It looks pretty good. It's the one that Matt and Chris are playing with. And then are the clouds, do we have control of the clouds? We got cloud speed. Cloud density. Wisp opacity. What? Oh, there it is in the back. Yo, not much going on here. Just relaxing, eating noodles. Dang, I want to eat some noodles. That sounds amazing. But yeah, this is the so this is the sky stuff that I'm using. It has some weird stuff that goes on, like there's some banding that's happening here with the uh, cloud. Nighttime brightness. Oh, interesting. I like that. Anywho, all right, cool. Not saving that. Yeah, yours looks pretty cool though. I like the the look that it's that it's giving you. All right. More more cool crazy stuff from uh, Andrew. Let's see if I can't. Uh, so there's one thing that I keep seeing with your models, Andrew, that um, grabs my attention as far as like things that need to be worked on. And it's like you're getting uh, interesting shapes happening, but I want to, uh, like the detail of these little guys is really, uh, what do you, they're really small compared to everything else. Like if you're gonna have that type of detail, you should have it in some other places as well to help support it. Or maybe make those bigger, maybe uh, like maybe that much here and then cut down in the amount here. Mancuna, no. Um, what else? There is this edge here is like round and then it like tightens up right here and then you you're getting some like smoothing issues here make sure uh, just because of industrial design reasons um, if it's gonna pinch there maybe it pinches here as well so then it's more of like a or like an oval 
or just make it completely round. And if it's too close to the edge here, move this whole area up. Uh, the other thing is, like, it's like I can, I don't know what it is. It's like I can see how the shapes were formed in a modeling sense, which makes it not feel as realistic. So, like, this edge is slanted at an angle and then is rounded here. And then that I can see that slant happen all the way down somehow, if you know what I mean. And then you got to be careful with your bevels. So you got an uh, edge count here. Make sure that's not too uh, hard edged. And then your your bevels, your concave bevels, where like the shapes uh, meet another surface, always seem to be a bit too tight. Like this edge maybe could be rounded or at least beveled, so it's the same bevel as this. Like it's like you need uh, industrial uh, industrial design consistency between all the shapes that you're portraying. Yeah, I don't know if you're using reference as well, because reference will really help you. Because you're exploring such like interesting and crazy shapes, um, it might be best to uh, just look at reference and find crazy shapes uh, through like Pinterest or something. Because there's, there's plenty of crazy things that are already made in reality that you can use to practice and get, get those details just right. And then like naturally you'll just get used to the way that industrial design kind of builds stuff. And then you can go crazy and make up your own things and get it to fit within the reality of like how industrial design works. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Because I'm like industrial di uh, design, uh, industrial design. Uh, so Mancunin, are you still alive? Are you still okay? We'll look at we'll look at your stuff, and then I'll get back to the other people. What is, this guy's? What's he doing? So this is this is starting to come together. I'm seeing I'm seeing stuff. This is good. So I wonder, so your screenshots, I would try and make them a little, um, I don't know, higher res somehow. I haven't really tried to export high res screenshots before in Unreal. I'm no, I know there's a way, but uh, like this detail here, uh, just because of the angle that you're shooting the shot at, I would totally uh, slant it a little bit more. That way you're not getting, um, you're not getting this happening but then getting cut off it's like a weird tangent break so you end up losing a lot of the shape that's happening you're not sure what you're what you're seeing so if you can see either just a little bit more of the top or a little bit more of the bottom that'll help uh, alleviate some of that problem your surfaces are getting much more subtle in their shifts and stuff which is really good like back here is feeling pretty nice this edge is a little sharp still Oops. Um, this is nice. It might be a little strong, but I'm not sure yet. I know that this, this stuff here is really strong. Like the contrast between those two is pretty intense. Uh, if you look at a wall that is doing that, they tend to have uh, reasoning behind why they're wearing like that. I guess right now it feels like it's a, it's like just like a mask that's splattered on there to fill in missing parts. Oh man, I'm sorry. Gotta love that internet. Internet's always our friend, isn't it? Uh, but overall, in general, the the details are really like this angle also is is pretty good. Other than that that tangent I was talking about, because now you have like you're looking down a. a a street or a little back alley. Man, you're really going for that low light angle. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Reeds.
Uh, when creating something like this, is your advice for still images or for in-game moving worlds as well? Uh, I would say that it goes for both. I will say that there's a caveat for when, like I say, um, I will specifically say don't do this if it's an open world game. <laughs> or don't do this if it's, if it's not an open world game. Like all the stuff I'm pointing out are issues that you should fix for real time or for screenshots, if that makes sense. Knives have hard edges. Knives do have hard edges. <laughs> that wall feels like a graffiti cover up. Um, let me let me look at it again. It feels uh, maybe here might be a graffiti cover up. I just realized that that's there. It's very strange that it's gradiented like this. Usually when they're uh, trying to do a paint cover up, if it's an okay job, then it's gonna be close to the color, but either just a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. What's up, Zen? Yo, yo. Uh, let's see what else we, we got here. Yeah, and remember to uh, anywhere where you can get interaction with the surface, like like this, would be nice. Even if it's just kind of some some dirtiness, it doesn't have to be dripping. Over overly dripping on stuff is gonna be, it gets old really fast. <laughs> uh, think about where the building base meets the floor as well. Because you'll get some stuff where, like, you want to... You have the pipes here. Look at my great pipes. This is this is great. Um, I'm just going to fill those in. <laughs> uh, putting some type of either a color paint, which is probably going to be more along the lines of uh, this type of scenery. They'll have, like, one color for the this bottom trim piece, and then right at the bottom edge, maybe they'll paint, like, a lighter color or a darker color. Uh, if you can, if you want to do like a model detail, that will help as well. And then I would think about modeling something around these pipes going into the ground, whether it be like, I don't know, the pipes just going straight into the ground is going to look weird. And in reality, sometimes they do go straight into the ground, but in that case, you'll see that there tends to be a collect up, uh, collect up, a collection of like little props, uh, little rocks and stuff. Um, let me think here. Little rocks, dirt, maybe some trash that just kind of gets stuck back there. It becomes like a magnet, you know, for just stuff that just doesn't get cleaned up. That's that's further down the line, though. I think for what you're what you're working on right now. Uh, and the reason I was making a comment about you getting a really low light angle is you're getting this uh, this banding that's happening. You see it everywhere. Uh, I would bring your light up just enough to not get that banding or see if baking your light maps will get rid of that. Oh man, Kunin. Well, I'm, I'm working on this for you, man. We'll, we'll get this. This stuff's looking really nice. I like how irregular it is. It feels like, like carpet or a cloth draped over is really good uh, that you know the trim stuff we were talking about down here maybe the trim happens here as well and goes behind the goes behind the cloth comes around this way and the nice thing is because if it's painted right you can do some of that paint chipping away around some of the edges of it how young are you now and how young were you when you made it Yeah, uh, Tobias, I'm gonna put this video on on YouTube as well. Uh, what do you What do you mean, Voron? What do you mean when I got into games? Um, I think I was 23. Is that right? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's Twenty. 
22 or 23. I can't even... Like early 2007? Or something like that? My first... My internship started like... Uh, late 2006. Uh, and then I got a job in another place and I went full-time right after school into... Uh, Zombie Studios, rest in peace. These guys are awesome. Yeah, be careful about those banding though. Uh, and now I'm 31. I got gray hairs, trust me, they're there. You just can't see them in that little webcam. Oh man, this shot is really nice as well. If you get unpaid internships, is there a guarantee? Okay, let me get through these ones and then we're gonna, I'm gonna answer those questions because they're, they get really, those are, those require some true answers. I need to like actually give you some, some good info. Uh, okay, so this area looks like it's a planter. Having it uh, wind around that corner is a bit strange. I would suggest maybe squaring it off like that. That way you can put a big plant here whatever it may be. I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's crazy tall, something like that, who knows. And then you can put smaller plants here. You like it? I don't know what that is. <laughs> but yeah, uh, shape-wise, it's, it's a little odd to see it turning the corner like that. This is also another perfect area to put like trash that, or little debris stuff that's uh, along the edge, and then some that maybe are built up behind this pole. Cause that pole would protect, you know, protect stuff. Dude, it looks like there's a little guy back here. <laughs> He's pulling, peeing on your pole. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. Um, make sure to add some doors over here somewhere. Like that. I'm still having a hard time understanding some of the scale. Like I see a door here, but I don't know if like, if that whole thing is a door or if it starts here and this is like a, a top part. This material is pretty cool. I like that, it's got some nice breakup. But yeah, make sure that you uh, solve this interaction between the, the meeting of two surfaces. Oh, this material is cool too. And then this mask, like right now, I can see that this mask continues over here. If you're going to put this here, this is the perfect uh, reason to, or excuse to have this as one modular piece and this as one modular piece with different mask tiling. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. All right, that looks, looks like a CS map. This is pretty. What are you making it in? Nice. Getting comments. Very good, man. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty hot. What can I say? <laughs> okay, before I get to the rest of these crits, I'm going to answer Voron's questions. So when la uh, if you do unpaid internships, is there a guarantee you will pay get paid work afterwards? There is never a guarantee of anything unless there's a contract involved that says so, right? Let's always remember that. Unpaid internships, uh, if you have the opportunity, avoid those. If you don't have the opportunity to avoid an unpaid internship and you just want to get that experience, I would definitely make sure that uh, it's got a deadline. Like there's some contract that says that you're only doing this unpaid internship for like six months or maximum a year that's super long for they're like totally taking advantage of you if you're if you're doing an un, unpaid internship for that long i wish i had someone to tell me that when i was getting getting into the industry and yes 31 i it's a small webcam that's why i look 20 i'm getting older as i get closer trust me um but yeah be careful with that stuff. Be careful with that stuff.
Oh, before before I switch over, this here, perfect opportunity to have like some type of railing to let you know that it is a balcony and then hang this stuff over it because then you then you get that cool draping of material over a, a material or an object you can see through like a fence or barrier experience is important uh, if your work is really good I don't know. I feel like if your work is good enough, there will be an opportunity for you to be paid to do that stuff. Some potted plants would be nice up here. Just some da -da -da -da, like uh, plant there. Some other. You definitely need some other color in your scene. That will help you immensely. Other thing too is like where the lights at, right? Like. You have these wires and stuff. Maybe you have like a wire that runs off of this and puts like this, this cheap uh, porch light or something here. And maybe maybe there's one here or here. There needs to be like a, a name tag here or on the door that says like so and so lives here. That's that like living uh, believing layer. Is kind of what I call it. This the the believability lived in layer. The reality layer, I guess, if you want to call it that. And definitely think about where graffiti could be. Suspension of disbelief layer. It's like, oh yeah, dude, I don't even have that many followers on, like I have more than four, but I mean, I don't post nearly enough on there. I need to post my division stuff still. I'm so lazy with that stuff. Okay, let's, let's look at some of the other stuff that's being built here. So we've got uh, G Mayung, is it G Mayung? Doing sick rock work. Like this, this stuff looks pretty cool. So zooming in on this, so we can we can analyze closer. This rock is big enough that it's a perfect candidate for using that layered material stuff because you can see how the resolution is starting to break down. Great opportunity to just get these like this highlighting stuff in a mask, getting this different material in a mask, and then this stone material in a mask. B. Mmm. Mmm. So good. It would look awesome. The shape shape read here is pretty good. Why why can't I there we there we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, this direction is a little odd, but uh, the overall you have overall flow of stone material, which is really good. Like you want that. You want that in rock. It's what, it's what gets, it's what sells rock materials the best. Uh, be careful on your if you make another one. Be careful about disking it too much. Whereas disking it is basically when it, it starts to, uh, like it's it's better here. Disking it is when it cuts into itself too often. But if your reference is doing that, some rocks do that. It's very strange, but some do that. But usually it, it tends to look strange. But overall, your materials are looking good. This, uh, this edge highlighting stuff is really making this area feel um, like a stylized uh, digital rock surface. I don't know, it almost looks like, especially right here, kind of looks like uh, when you get a gun in a game <laughs> it kind of is like a uh, digital gun paint if that makes sense there's like a pattern maybe that's maybe it's just in the division 
<laughs> so that is, that's not that's a bad example. But overall, like the values are pretty good, and when you squint, it's all pretty consistent. You have some nice shapes happening. I think having this asset and pushing it up against itself with other ones and changing the scale and stuff is really going to make it shine. But yeah, I would, I would definitely look at, oh man, upside down it looks, is this a different one? It's like this is the other side. This is the other side. That's that's good. So this uh, this area looks really nice because you're getting very very layering on top of larger layers. So you've got this going on. This is this is really nice. Cause see now you have a big shape, but then you have little shapes inside of it that are helping sell why that shape is so big or selling the reason that shape is so large. It's made up of a bunch of layers, but they're all of similar material because they're, they're tending to... <laughs> Almost spilled massive trade secret secrets. I did nothing like that. That that gun texture is already out. You get out of here. <laughs> um, this area is really good, too. It's nice. This material right here, I feel like, is very forced. I feel like you could probably not have that material. Or at least have it maybe the same color and try and follow a similar... Uh, the same color as this stone, but maybe either slightly darker or slightly lighter. A complete different color tone is feels strange in this scenario. It's looking cool, though. <laughs> Leak snowdrop. Do you think I know how to even look at snowdrop source code? Get out of here. <laughs> oh, I'm like, what is that? A zero? Oh my god. It's leaked. <laughs> Galen. Uh, Galen's posting. I'm like looking at it. Okay. Open sesame. So this model looks pretty cool. Is this in, uh, what is this in? Procedural uh, texture work progress before UV map. So you're just doing like a... <laughs> Hello world. Blender, okay. Pretty cool. Trying to think about the... Okay, so this... Oh man, this is going to be hard to draw on. Okay. <laughs> so this, uh, this metal paneling stuff, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about uh, the 30-70 ratio. I would probably make this surface solid because you already have so much detail happening throughout. Like in here... You have a lot of detail here, high detail there. Uh, and I don't know how sharp you want to make these edges. Maybe, maybe they're going to be sharp. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, they feel strange right now being so sharp. But yeah, double check your, your ratios for how much detail you're adding. Like the, this shape here, these little details. You might be able to fill those in and just accept these ones. That way you're you're gaining back some of that that uh, area of rest. And it might just be the camera angle as well. Oh, it's a bias. I did skip yours. It was because I went to Munchens. Hang on.
There's a better one where I can see the... Okay, don't let me forget to go back. Okay, I'm going back, Forceling. I got you. I got you, boo. Okay, we're looking at your gif. Your brick normals look better. I'm like, wait, what's happening? So, later, Bob. Uh, Forceling, Forceling, buddy. So, what what are you interested in having critiqued on here? Are you are you interested in having me look at the particle, uh, the overall scene, any specific props or composition? Getting close to the end of the stream too. Let me make sure I'm uh, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut us off at Voron's stuff. This looks pretty cool though. Uh, it might be a tad dirty, a tad too dirty in like uh, in this area. And the saturation of your um, of your bricks might be too saturated. Props, composition, modeling. Okay. Um, so the glass feels cool. The this this area could use uh, less dirtiness. That way you can actually see the rust better that's dripping onto the onto the stuff. Then I would make sure that um, these pipes have a good uh, roughness value to them as well. They're starting, they're looking pretty good. The biggest thing that's sticking out to me is the normal map for the bricks and the saturation value of the, of the uh, albedo. Uh, this puddle too, uh, shape wise feels a little strange. I think um, maybe it would look better if it was, you know, like if it puddled, puddled a bit more maybe if it got near this then it puddles around that a little bit if it's puddling near the wall then you'll you'll get a wall puddle trail that just kind of follows the wall a bit more um but yeah pay attention to your that puddle shape i'm assuming you you kind of want it to like come out into the space more just make it bigger like do this or something because you can get it, you could get away with that, and then you'll get really nice reflections of everything around it. Uh, let's see here. I need some type of transition here. Like I feel like it's this. This may be odd. Uh, just being solid, solid ground, and then these uh, these blockers here. What are they? Bollards? What do you call those bollards? I don't know. I didn't even know what a bullard was until I came came to Sweden. <laughs> Later, Reed. Uh, double check all of your scale and stuff. If you can get a drag a guy in here so that you can see the height of them, and uh, start analyzing scale more. Uh, the gloss of the brick. The shininess is pretty uniform. It's the same problem I have with my scene right now. I would see if you could use like decals to um, put some some grime patches to help break up the the shininess of that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Maybe draw some graffiti on here. Something small. Something like this. Cheese. Cheese graffiti. Um, yeah. Particle looks better. It's it's more irregular, which is cool. The smoke feels a little large. I'm not sure though maybe half the size on the smoke particles for maximum size. Maximum, maximum size. 
Uh, okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna keep going here. I gotta make sure to hit all you guys. So Galen, your front view of your, or the more frontish view does look better. And the ratio is a bit more in line. I would be careful with adding this micro detail and maybe go for like making this edge wider. Maybe doing like, um, making the edge wider like that. And then maybe dipping this, beveling that in. And then you can add like a little bit of the details inside of that bevel. That way you have more area to rest because you do have a lot of detail here already. And then you've got this and this. And you have a lot of detail here and this is all detail. But this is, this is cool design. Make sure that this is thick enough too. It feels like it might be a little thin. Logo on the cabinet. Okay, where else are we at here? Okay, two more. Mighty Bob, I can't get to yours. Smurf. Because I have to end the stream in four minutes. I will say, though, without reading the text you wrote and just glancing at it, that it's looking cool. Okay, let's see here. Rip. Oh, man. It's looking nice, I'll tell you that. So, let's see here. We're going to we're zooming in nice and nice and hot right now. Is this this for uh Source Engine? Oh, god damn it, acrylics, you're right. I was affiliating the two images together as one scene. You guys, you should actually, uh, you should actually embed that bench in here. <laughs> see here. So compositionally, shift it again. Like this is a common thing that, cause like uh, you, right now you have a line. This line is really straight. Ugh, that's not, oh God, nope. Like this is interesting that the ceiling is angled, but uh, yeah, just angling your yourself is gonna help you. That and I would totally, instead of having the side of the car, I would like park it with the headlights forward facing like it's parked towards, towards you. That way you get the side and the front. You will get a straight line, ah! Um that will help sell the car uh, more. Unless you just want the side, then that's totally fine. But definitely uh, play around with a couple different camera angles. I think the best thing that you could probably do is just take uh, take your camera and save like 30 different camera angles all over the place. Crazy spots. Think about like little creatures, tall creatures, where birds can see, like up in the rafters, down low on the ground, like mouse view. Uh, person view from the door from the car window all these different angles to try a bunch of different stuff uh, and drop that in the work in progress with numbers on all of them and just see what people are interested in so that's that's actually a really interesting exercise for finding out uh, what what people gravitate towards um, compositionally it's very rare that people are interested in um, a straight <laughs> that's not straight anyways it's very rare that people are interested in a straight image it's it's very difficult to to make this interesting enough when it could be slightly angled okay back back to the CSGO CSGO prop so the resolution of this totally tile it up or or up res it can you have two UV sets? Because if you can, one UV set should be the normals, and the second UV set should be uh, the wood tiling. Yeah, acrylics, the multiple screenshots is gonna help a shit ton. Like people, people will see the scene in so many different angles that like you're just guaranteed one's gonna, you'll see everyone will kind of pick like two or three of them out of like 30. Like, oh, that one. 
Uh, I would say, let's see here. So the metal brackets here are a little thick. Maybe a little wide as well, I'm not sure. Might be more visually interesting to have two brackets instead of one solid one. So you'll get, you'll get more uh, ambient occlusion play and those, those details. The, the bevel that you have on the wood here, I would maybe widen it a bit more in the, in the file just so that it comes out more in the bake. And then maybe darken it just a little bit in this, in this area to just show darken or lighten. Maybe it's more lighten. I would say it'd be more dark just because people are oily. <laughs> just from use, right? From usage. All right, do you have a... To, to be honest, who would look at the brackets? I would look at the brackets in your portfolio and I'd be like, no, no. <laughs> um, but grunge, yes. It's, it's those details you got to think about, though. Like, structurally, that looks more stylized and cartoony than that direction, I feel. It's all about scale and, like, if, uh, if you see that detail randomly in the corner of your eye, you might not even register it uh, directly, but in the back of your mind, you've just broke their immersion, possibly. That's... That's why I always say, look at those little details all the time. And I'm just kidding about saying, nope, that, that would be completely ridiculous. <laughs> just like, nope, brackets are bad. Nope, no, nope, not this guy. <laughs> uh, the splattering of the lightning and stuff is, is very random and arbitrary. I would say that um, in the seat area, it makes a little bit more sense, but like this back area, it's very strange. And is there a reason that it's one single plank instead of um, a couple of them? Hmm. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can, I can say. Yeah, it's true. I mean, when you look at someone's portfolio, you're just like, yeah, man, this guy's awesome. Look at the things he's paying attention to. Not necessarily that it'll go into a game, right? But the, the attention to detail is just that, that important. Uh, later, Mel, I'm about to go as well. I just, wanna, I just want you to know that this, uh, the high poly for this is pretty cool. Uh, these wood pieces that are put here, I would maybe put a line, put a line here so that you know that it was pushed into the wood and then maybe put like a bolt or something like that in the texture. That, that'll help uh, just how it's constructed, right? Maybe the direction of the wood grain is going like this. Well, that's, nope, it's doing this, right? Maybe it's going like that. Right here is where you would totally have like a a seam or this way so maybe the seams here just sculpting a little bit of a gap there or sculpting a tiny gap there will help selling selling how the shapes are put together is going to help a lot yeah it's pretty good i mean you don't have to necessarily sculpt in the wood grain itself but chipping away stuff here and here and here and this stuff this and this you can do that stuff because all of this normal information you can get in their tileable you can get that in your tileable material and really look at your uh, like in source they're using specular right really look at your specular for just breaking up the surface because you got to get some play happening on the surface right now it's very flat that's why I'm su suggesting things like the bolts will really help because then you, you get some, some glossiness on those it's difficult though. Thank you, senor. <laughs> All right, guys.
I gotta get out of here. I will upload these and I will start posting the videos hopefully tomorrow. It takes a little bit of time for me to, to uh, modify them. And you know, are you even, do you even have your earphones on? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, you're talking about these smudge spots. Yeah, they, everything has to have a reason. Super important. Let's end with some massive attack, guys. Feels good. Oh my god. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys later.